probably the biggest conversation piece on today's topic, and that's, of course, ESPN kind of holding these talks, I would say. Uh, Bob Iger also had an interview with uh, with CNBC, I think, uh, talking about ESPN's future, where does it hold. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because I think it is a fascinating topic to really discuss and really kind of have a conversation about because it really lends itself to what I think is going to be a very interesting time in sports, I would say, because of the fact that I think the social media, the streaming rights, and everything like that has really, in my opinion, turned this whole thing and this whole world upside down with the way that um, I would say never before has been seen in any capacity. Um, you know, I, I think a lot, and, and let me read this before we get going. Actually, let me find, uh, maybe I'm not sure if the article's in here. Maybe we can, uh, maybe it's right here. Let's see if it'll, uh, let me make sure it's going to be on the screen for you guys as well. No, that's the Disney. Oops, sorry. I did not mean to show you the stock of Disney. <laughs> that is not what I was going for. I was hoping that it would show, uh, the article, but. Let me kind of read and talk about what's going to be. It's going to be a little bit of a doozy, so uh, I'll kind of give the TDLR of this before I read the whole quote. Um, is essentially that Bob Iger, um, who is the CEO and head of, of Disney, um, is trying to figure out a way to make more money, obviously, because Disney is losing money. Um, we know that Disney Plus has not been a success as they would like to have seen. Um, but we know that ESPN is, and we know that, because of the unsuccessfulness, I would say, of, um, ouch, the unsuccessfulness, I would say, of Disney Plus in terms of the way that they would have, they would have liked, um, they are now going to be selling a lot of their stuff. I think Disney Channel is going to be something that they sell, Freeform TV, ABC, those are going to be some networks that are going to get let go by Disney. Um, so if you guys are watchers of that, of those programs and things like that, um, uh, just be ready, I would say, for a change in the market because uh, I, I just think it, the, the market has shifted so much that I, I think that eventually that big change is going to happen. But they are deciding that you know sports is going to be one of those markets where they're not going to touch in terms of they're not going to sell the ESPN. They're not going to do any of that. Um, but they do want to start, I would say, in closing – some of these sports leagues onto their own streaming service and platforms. You know, ESPN plus is one of those things, you know, I haven't really used ESPN plus the way that I think a lot of people should be um, in terms of, you know, there's a lot of games on, there's a lot of like colleges, a lot of high school, a lot of NBA, a lot of um, not even NBA, but just more so uh, overseas basketball, things like that. Um, and I think ESPN wants to start utilizing ESPN Plus a little bit more because um, I'm going to talk about it kind of in, in a bigger segment. But that's kind of the TDLR. Uh, ESPN is basically looking into, hey, these leagues could own a minority ownership in ESPN uh, to kind of have a place where they can put their games on um, when they're when they're battling with NBC, Fox Sports, and all these other networks that want to show these games. Basically, it's kind of like a, a safekeeping place where they can say, hey, we own part of ESPN, so we're going to put – and you know they can agree to whatever terms they want. They can say, yeah, we're going to put our stuff on ESPN. Get with our program or else you're not going to get on this uh, on this roster or on this uh... – <coughs> excuse me. Get with us. Um, but let me go on to read what, uh, what it goes on to say. Um, so the article says in this – now, I'll kind of show it on Twitter, so I do apologize that the thing is small. The article goes on to say this. Uh, ESPN may not be at a crossroads just yet, but if it's not, it's there already. It'll quickly be approaching one. The channel saw its loss from cord cutting outweighed the amount of money it earned from carriage fees increased for the first time during the second quarter of 2023, and its parent company having discussions with cable and satellite providers about launching an all-encompassing streaming version of ESPN that doesn't require a pay TV subscription and presumably incorporate all content currently on ESPN. Um, 
Such an offering is still a way off, but the new report surfaced last week that Disney was having discussions with the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball about bringing the sports league on as a minority owner, owners in the family of networks. If ESPN did sell part of ESPN to majority sports leagues or to major sports leagues, it would be a game-changing move in several ways. First, it would give the channel and the leagues enormous leverage over other broadcasters when it came time to renegotiate broadcasting right deals. The NFL could demand whatever price it wants from CBS, Fox, and NBC for its games. If a network doesn't pay, the league can simply stash its games on ESPN outlets instead. Selling part of ESPN to major sports leagues would also allow these leagues to increase their presence uh, on streaming once ESPN does begin offering a standalone streaming-only version of its channel. The leagues would still have the option of shopping their games around to other streaming services, but if they don't see the kind of offers they want, they can all have an in-house option ready to go. Audiences would likely follow ESPN's streaming. Uh, even the older viewers who have traditionally been resistant to watching sports on streaming in general. A survey from September found that 78% of cable subscribers rated ESPN as a must-have channel, once again confirming the sickness of its brand and the likelihood that customers would engage with the streaming-only version of, its uh, of the channel at a high level. The transition of ESPN streaming... Uh, The transition of ESPN to a streaming format may not take long, as some believe. Uh, Bob Iger of Disney CEO said that in an interview with CNBC in July that linear TV may not be the core to Disney going forward and that his company was exploring strategic partners to buy into ESPN or perhaps the purchase other linear TV assets from Disney, such as ABC, Disney Channel, and Freeform, right? Just like I talked about, they're looking to probably get rid of those, I would say, three things, which kind of sucks in terms of you know Freeform, Disney Channel, ABC, like those, I would say, were a big part of my childhood. Uh, and it's kind of crazy to think that those are just now going to be by the wayside. Um, you know, one of the big issues was, of course, Major League Baseball struggles with its regional sports network, lately making it an especially intriguing candidate to buy a portion of ESPN. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfield has been blunt about his desire to pull all of his teams off of re regional sports networks where their audience are much smaller and make all 30 clubs available in an in-market streaming platform that eliminates blackouts and other such restrictions. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that the platform isn't feasible just yet is that the wealthier teams like the New York Yankees and Red Sox have their own in-market streaming services available. Uh, therefore, those clubs would get to keep all the ready for themselves. And that to me is the, one of the biggest issues. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, there's still a lot of host of questions to be answered. Uh, very few details available about Disney's wheeling and dealing behind the scenes regarding ESPN, but partnering with major sports leagues would give the channel a great deal of flexibility heading into the future, especially when it launches its own streaming version of itself. Um, and really quick, I just kind of want to read what Bob Iger said. Um, he kind of said this uh, to, to a lot of uh, owners and executives. Um, you know, but know that sports network content is still very uh, with the ability to reach millions of people. I think the biggest thing with sports and, and kind of Bob Iger kind of says it is that it is the only thing right now on TV that really unites a lot of people together. If you really think about think about the Super Bowl, everybody and their mom watches the Super Bowl, right? Think about you know national coverage games, right? The the uh, the All Star games, the the pennant race for MLB baseball, the NBA finals, like all that stuff live brings a lot of people together all at once. Whereas now with the streaming services and the way things are going, especially, you know, Disney plus being one of them, you know, Mandalorian, right? You can watch that whenever you want. You don't have to every Friday. Like, yes, it releases every Friday, but you don't have to watch it that Friday and be like, oh, dang, I missed it. When you can just go and find a, a different recording of it, right? Or you can go on live stream and say, hey, I, I just want to watch it. Instead of, uh, you know, missing out on the opportunity, right? Like, let's say Friday you're busy or you want to go out or whatever you want to do on Friday. And, you know, that's when the TV show goes on. You can watch it the next day. Whereas in the past, like, yeah, you can record it. But for the most part, if you missed it, you missed it. And so that's kind of the thing that uh, Bob Iger is talking about it. Um he also goes on to say, we're going to be open-minded about looking for strategic partners. We're going to be open-minded about looking for strategic partners that can help us either help us with distribution or content. I'm going to get, I'm not going to get too detailed about it, but we're bullish about sports in general as a media property. Um, 
And again, I don't want this to turn into, uh, I would say, finance in any sort of way. Like, we know ESPN and we know that Disney Plus have lost a lot of money. Um, and they're looking to get some of that money back. There's a reason why there was a ton of layoffs for ESPN. There's a reason why, I even talked about it here, they're looking to sell the network. They're looking to sell ABC, Freeform, Disney Channel, because eventually they're going to probably, like I talked about, they're going to move everything to digital, um, try to make it more exclusive, um, which in a way can hurt or help the the consumer, right? If you're a Disney kind of supporter or loyalist you're probably gonna buy their their streaming content anyway i think the trouble or the issue that you could get into at times is that now there's so many different streaming services that you now have to pay ten dollars here ten dollars there ten dollars you know to basically everything and really what i wanted to kind of do a discussion on uh and the reason why i kind of wanted to make sure it was on twitter is because i think that this is a very interesting conversation to have when you think about it <clears throat> from a perspective of, of, of it like this. Why has ESPN been a dinosaur the last five to seven years when it comes to this type of content? Um, you know, you think about all, you even think about the latest deal that they made with Pat McAfee. Um, if you guys don't know, a uh, very popular uh, st uh, streamer, had a very successful show, um, and is the reason why he's now getting, I believe, over a hundred million dollars from ESPN. And it's because these cable networks never understood, I would say, the power of the internet, social media, and really to be honest, YouTube. The reason why that they never really understood that is because they thought that for the most part, ESPN doesn't really make their money from the sports leagues, if you think about it, right? They rent out the time slots for these sports leagues, ESPN does, to make sure that these these sports leagues have a place to show their games, right? It's the reason why, you know, the TV deals continue to go up and up and up. And it's the reason why a lot of these people in media got fired because you can't sustain that for very long. And in the past, I would say 10 to 15 years ago, before YouTube uh, before Twitter, before Instagram, before TikTok, before all these these uh, other media outlets really became popular, where did you go to watch your fantasy football news? Right? Where did you go to watch, you know, NFL Sunday countdown? Like, hey, you know, let's get the the big stories about the you know the injuries. Right? You're 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 playing fantasy football. You need to know about the big injuries. Yeah, you know, there's a little ticker that says um, when you click on the fantasy football player, hey, this guy's going to be hurt. He might he might not play. He's a 50-50 shot. Now, there's a place on the internet where you can search that information up. Um, in the past, like, you had to watch NFL Countdown. You had to watch NBA Countdown. You had to watch Around the Horn, PTI, First Take, Undisputed. Like, these were, these were social media, I would or say these were TV shows that would build off of the sports, right? And it's the reason why ESPN got so many views back in the day and why the money was good and why they could hire so many of these on-air talents because they want to provide content for you, right? Their content, basically they are content creators in a sense. If you really think about it, all of the guys on ESPN, everybody at Fox Sports, everybody is a content creator trying to occupy your time so that they can sell ads from whatever sports, right? So think about it. They, you know, they have like a Dick's Sporting Goods ad. You know, you see it. Oh, yeah, you know, I kind of want to go to Dick's Sporting Goods and buy uh, a new basketball or I want to buy, uh, you know, golf equipment and things like that. You know, that's how they get you. That's how ESPN really worked. But with the rise of social media and the way that these networks never saw it coming, I don't have to wait until the 4 p.m. slot to look up fantasy football news. If I want to go, I can just go here, go to youtube.com, search up, you know, fantasy football 2023, and you have all these guys. You have a guy live streaming right now, uh, Flock Fantasy. I, I have no idea who he is. Um, but again, a guy going live right now doing a mock draft. 
Guys talking about six must wide receivers in 2023. Draft, avoid, all this stuff. If you really think about it, that to me is what's killing ESPN and Fox Sports and other net news networks because I can go to YouTube and instantly find a video and say, let me find out what I can look up for fantasy football news. That is what Bob Iger, and I just think ESPN, like as much as I think that they would give the minority, you know, ownership to these leagues, I think it's too late in terms of where people are getting their news from, where people are getting their stuff and information from, right? You know, I can look this up, right? Basketball news. You know, we're doing a show right now talking about fantasy or about basketball. Right, we talk about all this stuff. Geo, you know, ball is life. Talking about the Mizzou man. What's going on with this guy? Bronny's first practice as a Trojan. You know, like there is so much information. Like I can instantly click on this video and not have to do um, what should we call it? I don't have to wait until the eight o'clock segment on ESPN to finally watch. Hey, Bronny had his first practice, right? It's kind of one of those things where that I think is what screwed, I would say, uh, ESPN the most is just the fact that they didn't really get into the streaming YouTube's uh, environment, right? You know, no longer are people invested in the sets and the fancy things on the outside. Like, yes, I would, you know, for me personally, I would love to have that here on the charge. I would love to have a professional studio where we have uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, but have a studio where I have a desk with basketball uh, with a basketball rack in it and me and Pete discussing on it and talking, maybe not in suits. I don't, uh, maybe in suits. I don't know. I look pretty, I look pretty fly in a suit, but, uh, but you know, in a suit or, you know, whatever it is like, you know, that I would love for that to happen, but that to me, it's just not the reality, right? My best live stream here on YouTube was me and Pete talking about a, a, a summer league game in the Drew League about LeBron James, right? And it was just me and him watching the video on there, um, and that's what garnered millions of views, whereas ESPN, they can't just break from a segment to do that, right? They can't focus on that stuff, and... Again, I, I think the thing that really killed ESPN and really what's getting ESPN in this sort of predicament and where they have to go in terms of getting, I would say, turning from a sports renting league to a sports owning league in terms of they need to own uh, the sports leagues. They need to look into buying the sports leagues, uh, TV deals and stuff like that because they're just not going to make money. They're just not. Right, they're not making any money off of buying the rights of the NBA or the NFL. Like I understand that they're gonna get money from the advertisement dollars and things like that, but if people are not watching the other sports networks and the other content that you have on the on your channel, that is a big issue, and that's really what's going to get ESPN into a lot of trouble, and it already has. Right, you know, like we talked about, ESPN Plus numbers are not the highest they've ever been. You know, ESPN has not been successful in a very long time. And I think they're finally getting into this sort of panic mode. And the reason why they brought on a guy like, you know, the way they paid Steve Naismith, the way that they're looking into paying Shannon Sharp, the way they're looking to pay Michael Irvin, the way that they're looking, the way that they paid Pat McAfee is because they are trying to buy content creators to make sure that you, the audience member, or me, an audience member as well, are now officially my competitors. Like I'm looking to compete with ESPN for your screen time. That that to me is what we're doing right now. Like I'm posting the show talking about the the financial problems at ESPN because they're they're officially and again, I am nowhere near the ballpark of these other TV shows like, you know, we looked on YouTube, right? Um, whatever this guy's name is, Fancy Flock, right? He has over 1.1 watching right now. 17K watched an eight eight hours ago video talking about uh, the six must wide receivers. Like that is an ESPN competitor. This guy is an ESPN competitor. 
And eventually I would love for that to be my case as well. Like we need to be able to compete. Um, but, you know, I, th I think it just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort that, you know, Pete and I need to work on it as well. Um, and especially me, you know, how, you know, as someone that uh, is really involved in the charge and the way that things have been going here, we need to do a better job of it. Uh, but at the end of the day, like ESPN is now a competitor of ours. Like we are trying to compete in the same market, right? We're trying to get your attention, especially people that love basketball. We're trying to get you to watch basketball. I know that uh, we talked about fancy football and probably a sport that no one really likes here on the channel. Uh, but I did have to talk about it because I think it is a, a, converse, a topic of conversation. Um, but it's kind of one of those things that we just need to continue to monitor and look at the situation at hand because I do think that this is um, going to be something very interesting because I think it could lead down a couple of routes that may be positive, but it may be negative. Like, if you really think, stop and think about it, if ESPN, if they're minority owned by these other leagues, like it said in this article, ESPN could just say, or, you know, M NBA could just say, hey, NBC, uh, Fox, we want X amount of dollars for this product, like to, to rent on your programming. If you don't want to give it to us, we're just going to stay on ESPN and be happy and satisfied there. Um, you know, I, I think that it's, it's kind of one of those things where it could be a slippery slope, though, right? Because... You know, I, I kind of had this, uh, I would say this inclination about these sports leagues is that eventually, you know, these TV deals can't get any higher, right? I think they can, but eventually it's going to kind of plateau because it's just so much money year after year. Um, and for these sport networks to even consider paying that much and doing other things to get uh, to be involved in the situation it takes a lot of freaking money. It takes a lot of money, right? Um, and, and that to me is the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that I think these sports leagues have to be aware of is that, you know, I don't think the money is going to infinitely go up and up and up every single year. Like, you know, I know there's inflation and other things like that involved. Um, but man, it, it's tough to, it's tough to, sell that to somebody it's tough to um it's tough for these sports leagues because again it, it it is for these for these sports networks or these uh these uh these conglomerates like espn like uh abc like um like nbc and all these other sports network leagues you're not paying like you know they're not they're not making any money besides the advertisement dollars of whatever company decides to want to put advertisements on along with their games, right? I, I just think that's going to be a tough conversation for a lot of these squads and a lot of these teams. Um, you know, again, we see the New York Yankees and the Red Sox; they were smart and have their own sports network. I think even I think the Knicks also have their own sports network, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Madison Square Garden Sports Network. <laughs> Excuse me, like. I think it's going to be tough for these leagues or the really these teams that have their own net sports network to say, Hey, yeah, we're going to join you there. I, I just, I think it's just a lot of money that they don't want to lose. And so, uh, yeah, you know, I don't want, I didn't want this to turn into some uh, long conversation, but it ended up turning into that. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the reality of where sports are at right now. I mean, it's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of things at stake um, that need to be, adjusted and situated before we can really i would say understand the full legality and really the longevity of how long sports networks and sports leagues can last with the way that things are going but uh let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys make of all this again espn is in a world of hurt they're looking to sell a minority stake to these sports leagues to own espn to have uh, ownership in them uh Again, like I said, it could either be a really good thing, it could really, it could be a bad thing. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's kind of the reality of sports network and really the sports talk shows that we have right now. If you really think about it, no longer is it I have to wait till five or six p.m. to talk about NFL. I can go to YouTube and look up fantasy football. I can go to 
YouTube and look up basketball news and rumors and uh, things like that, like here on the charts, which I hope you guys do. Like we don't, you don't have to wait anymore. You know, it's on the content creator for sure. But you know, the content creators for the most part are going to create content throughout the week. So you can just say, you know, I want to watch this now. What are people saying a month ago about who the best receiver was? What are they saying now? I think it's just a little bit different, but anyway, guys, let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys make of this story and so much more? Please remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you need the channel. Again, all this stuff helps out the channel tremendously. So let me know in the comment section down below.